Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer and this is Outer Wilds. I've recently been playing through the game again for the Misadventures of Nova series, and it's got me thinking a bit about Black Hole Warp Cores, so I figured it'd be interesting to dedicate a full video focusing on them and how they work and the history of them and all of that. And as always, this video will contain spoilers for Outer Wilds. When I first played through the game, it seemed to me the warp cores were something the Nomai sort of locked into by finding, you know, a black hole at the center of the planet they landed on. But it seems the Nomai actually had a history with black holes. In fact, one of the Nomais who were trapped in our solar system, Anona, is actually the inventor of the black hole warp core technology. Around 10 years before the wreck, Anona shared that knowledge with every other Nomai clan at an event called the Festival. From then on, every Nomai shuttle traveled the universe utilizing these black hole warp cores. While traveling on Eskel's vessel, Anona was responsible for the upkeep of the advanced warp core along with his apprentice, Poke. But as we know, Eskel's vessel crashed and the technology was lost to the now stranded clan. Two escape pods were able to survive this crash, and the Nomai inside got stranded on the separate planets where they landed. One on Ember Twin, which Anona was on, and the other on Brittle Hollow, and that one had Poke. Luckily for the Nomai, Brittle Hollow's core is a natural black hole, but unfortunately for the Nomai, Anona was never able to make his way to Brittle Hollow. As far as I know, he died before he ever got to see a black hole again. Thankfully, Anona was a good teacher, and his pupil, Poke, was a good student. It seems to have taken a while before Poke had the luxury of access to the black hole, but once she got there, she put her knowledge to good use. So, funny side note, after looking at the black hole forge at the beginning, I was certain the Nomai just used the forge to scoop out a tiny black hole. So much so, in my very limited interview with the lead developer of Outer Wilds, I asked him if the Nomai used a special spoon to scoop out black holes. Unfortunately, to my whimsical wishes anyway, he says no spoons were involved. To start, the Nomai would make the warp core casings. They would seal them up and somehow warp space-time so much a black hole forms inside of it. At this time, a white hole likely appears as well. A casing would be put around that and Poke would attach them both to the black hole forge from the outside. She would then lower them down to expose them to the horizon of the black hole. From here, I think it's just add power and it works. Poke would then align the pair of cores to activate only when they align in a specific way, within 5 degrees, she says, with the astral body above the initial destination's warp core. Now this is kind of confusing because she says she kind of wants it to be accurate and they won't work unless they're accurate. But another log says that, well, don't you know that they're always aligned and blah blah blah, so it's sort of confusing. But we'll go with they have to be aligned within 5 degrees because that's what Poke says and she made it. Now, I know it's called the White Hole Station, but with the warp cores finished, that's where they took the black hole warp core to install it. And they made a retriever platform on Brittle Hollow, which they placed the white hole core in. At that point... The whole system was set up and all that was left to do was to test it. A brave Nomai named Clary decided to test the whole warp core system. She stood on the black hole core pad and waited for Brittle Hollow to align above the platform. This probably just means when both of the rod like things inside the warp cores line up, but I think they mentioned that the alignment indicator doesn't exactly have to be on the pad itself, just nearby. But either way, the white hole station worked. Clary safely made the journey to Brittle's Hollow. When she stood on the platform and the alignment took place, the power kicked on and a small black hole appears before her. She instantly goes through it and when she arrives, she can see a white hole that she gets expelled from. But it's sort of interesting. After she made the trip, the receiver platform is now in a charged state, ready re to return the user to wherever they came from. There are two interesting things about this. It proves the alignment thing is sort of chosen and set by the Nomai. It's possible to use the warp cores regardless of their position in space, because no matter when I hop back on this thing, it'll warp me back to the white hole station. And, somehow, when we use it, a black hole comes out of it. 
So the white hole core receiver produces a black hole for us to enter, and I really don't know how that happened. Anyway, that's simple warp cores in a nutshell. But the stranded Nomine didn't really stop there. Poke undertook a huge task with a lot of stress attached to it. She had to recreate a lost technology from scratch without ever having been taught how to make them or having ever seen a blueprint. Poke agreed to make an advanced warp core, a drastically better version of the basic warp cores. Instead of having to have a core and receiver at both ends of the locations that you want to travel between, an advanced warp core has both the black and white hole all combined in one casing. I don't know exactly how, but if you type in the location, the advanced warp core can warp you there without having a receiver there. As long as you can tell it where to go, it'll produce a white hole there and warp you there. But that's not really what the stranded Nomai used it for. The black holes inherently have a negative time interval property. Anything that goes through a black hole gets expelled from its connected white hole before it ever went through. The Nomai discovered and studied this phenomenon to try to utilize this negative time interval. By adding more power, this minuscule time interval was increased. So by adding all the power that they could catch from a supernova, the Nomai were able to use the black hole to send thing back 22 minutes in time. Now, we won't confuse anything and talk about how this process can go wrong. This is a video about how they are supposed to work. If you are interested in what would happen if it didn't work right, I have a few videos talking about and explaining that. But anyway, that's how warp cores and advanced warp cores are supposed to work in Outer Wilds and do work. Which sort of leads up to this interesting follow-up question that led to this entire video. Where did the Harthians get so many of these dang warp cores? They used them for their little scouts and the RC ship. I mean, it's just sitting there in the middle of the town for anybody to use. I mean, we can all agree that creating these things were not an easy process for the Nomai. And I don't know about you, but I don't think one of those casings could fit inside of a scout. So that means that we have miniaturized warp cores? Did the Harthians just find these laying around somewhere? They all seem to be accounted and present for at the HEL. And there are no finished ones at the Black Hole Forge that seem to be ripe for the taking. And I'm not sure the Nomai would have them just laying around anywhere else. Does that mean the Harthians reverse engineered the warp cores? Maybe they somehow make their own or just, or just build a housing into the scout and put the Black Hole inside of it directly? I'm not entirely sure and I really can't even begin to figure it out. Honestly, I'm fine at just chalking it up to video game logic on this one. One of those things that we weren't meant to think so much about. Even in the observatory, the display for them doesn't even directly mention black holes. So the Harthians may have no idea how advanced the warp technology they're using really is. But whatever the answer is, I think it's interesting to imagine the Harthians working at the black hole forge like they were just born into it. But that's about all I have for this video, which all came from a late night mistake of saying our player character would be skeptical of warp travel. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like, because YouTube really does recommend the video more if it has more likes. And if you don't want to miss my next video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. Or you can join the Lore Explorers Discord, which I update manually as each video comes out. Also, channel memberships are available now as well, which will unlock badges for you and make your comments stand out more in my videos. You'll also get a special role in the Discord if you've joined that, and you'll have your name shown after each video as a special thank you from me, the Lore Explorer. But for now, this is the Lore Explorer, just wanting to thank you for watching the video to begin with, and I hope to see you in the next one.